you can sit here and answer questions at the end. So what?
I definitely did that. I just realized that he put, we had a replacement. I was going to see if I could edit that name, but it's too late, huh? Because we um, don't have Michael Robinson. We have Megan Lewis. Okay, hold on. Oh, what is going on here? Why won't it let me edit? Uh, file. Um. And that was, I should have told him, that was my fault. <laughs> it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. I got this. Watch this. She's, I got the last name. My cousin's name is Megan, and it's M E G A Y N. Oh wow! I never and I've seen M E G A N. So, I wanted to ask to make sure that it was uh, correct. Slideshow. There it is. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. My name is Erica Cotton, and I'm a woman in long-term recovery. And what that means for me is I haven't found it necessary to take a drink or a drug since March 17th, 2017. And welcome to conducting presentations and educating the public about Oxford House. I have some housekeeping items real quick. Um, oh, well, welcome to the 2022 Oxford House World Convention. Lanyards, name tags are required to enter all sessions. Please silent your cell phones during the breakout sessions. No side conversations. Step outside if needed. <clears throat> Excuse me. Please do not smoke, vape, or do not smoke or vape near any entrances. Dispose of your cigarette butts properly and safely. No littering. Remember, we are representing Oxford House while we're in Seattle this weekend. Take notes during the sessions to take it back to your chapter, replication. Questions will be addressed at the end of the sessions. Okay, so we have on our panel today, we've got Megan Lewis. We've got Whitney Anderson. We've got Taylor Wright. And we have Leif Plobe. 
said it right. Okay, I'm gonna give y'all a brief description of what the panel's gonna be about and then we're gonna get started. Oxford House outreach workers and Oxford House residents and alumni frequently have the opportunity to conduct presentations about Oxford House at conferences and meetings and individual sessions with treatment providers, treatment facilities, and penal facilities. The presentations are useful in informing people about Oxford House, its program, structure, and success in helping residents achieve long-term recovery. The panelists will provide tips on how to do these presentations successfully. Presentations to treatment providers are particularly important. Most individuals recovering from alcoholism or drug addiction initially go through formal treatment programs. Individuals who get into an Oxford house following such treatment are generally more likely to achieve successful long-term recovery than if they go directly back to the community after treatment. This not only helps the individual, but ultimately helps the success rate of the referring treatment, treatment facility. The panelists are experienced presenters and will discuss their methods along with what works and what doesn't work. They will talk about valuable formats for long presentations and elevator speeches. They will also discuss having real-time vacancy information for primary treatment providers and the recovery community. Okay, first up we're gonna have Megan Lewis. Megan Lewis moved into Oxford House Gumbo in Mandeville, Louisiana, November 1st, 2017, and became an employee of Oxford House July 1st, 2019. She is the outreach worker for Baton Rouge, Louisiana. She is a certified peer specialist. She is a certified peer support specialist and a mother to three beautiful kids and two beautiful grandbabies. Y'all welcome Megan. Hey guys, how are y'all? All right, I'm Megan, and I'm a woman in long-term recovery, and what that means for me is I haven't found it necessary to drink or use any drugs since May the 2nd, 2017, and I am truly grateful for that. Um, so I have a quick question. How many of y'all came into an Oxford house because a presentation was done in a treatment center or a jail? Awesome, that's a lot of people. So it's very important that we get, into, get involved into our HSC committee where we have a presentation coordinator. Um, it's also great service work, right? It's really good. You can't keep, keep it if you don't give it away, right? So what you want to do is, you, and then you never know that you might be that hope for that one person in treatment that hears your story on how it worked for you. Um, so a presentation coordinator must be a resident of a house and shall serve a, ter a term one year and may be reelected to additional term. A presentation coordinator um, is going to work closely with the outreach. They're going to work closely together on getting into the treatment centers, the detox, hospitals, jails, anywhere that you can talk about Oxford and, and recovery is where you need to get into. Um, you want to recruit, right? We want to recruit any residents and alumni to join on our presentation. I know in Louisiana, um, we are very established in presentations and a lot of um, treatment centers and, and jails because of the people that was before us, right? They had set this up, so we kind of just fell into this great establishment. But um, you can, uh, you know, you can, I just lost where I was, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, so let's get back on track. All right, so we're going to recruit any residents and alumni to join on our presentations. You're going to go over at your H HSC committee. Um, you're going to have a presentation report. And what that is is your presentation coordinator will go over the presentations that are coming up the next month so that you can get the people in the houses to um, commit to go. And we want to make sure that we always show up. And it is important to, um, you know, stay committed to these relationships that we are in because we want to be able to help people and save lives. Like, that is our main goal is to save lives, right? So in order to do that, we've got to get in there and we've got to um, promote Oxford in a better way and service work, right? So you're doing a one-on-one -on -one thing. Um, Let's see, present, well, we just went over that. So we wanna use, utilize the model, the HSC model that um, is given to us. Um, a lot of states have websites. 
So you can go on the website, utilize that, and it has presentation coordinator, and it lists the duties and stuff that is um, what you'll need. Um, I know in Louisiana, we, um, we face a challenge in Baton Rouge. We have uh, a, lot of sober, uh, a lot of treatment centers that have their own sober living, so they don't allow Oxford House in there. But there's always a way that you can get in there and still bring an AA meeting, right? Because if you're in this room, Oxford House is part of your recovery. You know, it is. Um, so you can get in there. You can share your experience, strength, and hope of how Oxford House has helped you in your recovery and not at the same time as uh, doing the presentation, but kind of like an AA meeting. <laughs> um, but there are also... Um, uh, okay, yep, so let's see, I just went sidetracked. I'm really nervous, I'm sorry guys. <laughs> oh, yay. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so being with that, going into the treatment centers and talking about AA and Oxford, um, it's really important to remember that anywhere you go, you can do a presentation. You, you, can't, you are Oxford House. You, the people in this room, you are Oxford House. You represent them either in treatment centers, if you're going to the grocery store, anywhere you go, you want to remember that you can talk about Oxford and you can do a presentation in the grocery store line. You know, addiction affects everybody, right? And, and anybody that stops you, you can, you can spread the word um, because that is our main goal is to help save lives and fill beds. Filling beds is very important. If your house is empty, get with your presentation coordinator, right? Set up a, tr uh, a presentation so you can fill them vacancies because that's what we are. And the more we, we get out there and we present Oxford, we can grow, right? We can expand just like Paul wants the 10,000 houses. We can do that, right? We can do, do that by doing presentations and going into jails and treatment centers. And that's all I got, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Megan. So next up we have Whitney Anderson. And fun fact, I, when I was in treatment in 2017 in Wichita Falls, um, I was talking to my therapist. He's like, you know, look into this this Oxford house when you get out of treatment. And I had no idea what it was. I just knew that I was willing to do whatever it took to stay sober. And so fast forward, I'm at the recovery center in Wichita Falls and Whitney actually came down. She was brand new in Oxford house and she came down with her outreach worker to do a presentation. So um, she was one of the first introductions that I had of Oxford house. So it's absolutely amazing that I get to be on this panel with her today. So Whitney moved into Oxford House Broadlawn in Ardmore, Oklahoma, July 6, 2016. Her sobriety date is June 11, 2016. Whitney was hired as an outreach worker in November of 2018. She currently covers the southern rural areas in Oklahoma. Y'all welcome Whitney. Hey guys. My name is Whitney Anderson. I am a woman in long-term recovery, and what that means for me is I haven't found it necessary to have a drink or use drugs since June 11, 2016. I also am super nervous up here, um, but we're just gonna roll with it, guys, so. Um, <laughs> I, like she said, I am an outreach worker in a rural area. Are there any rural people in here? A few. So we are expanding, you know, across the, the United States into rural areas. So it's really important that we, because we have to really think outside of the box, right? Um, to do presentations, to find place, to find, you know, people that move into our homes. Um, so I'm gonna talk about preparing for presentations. Um, first, you want to, of course, locate places to do your presentations. And like I said, thinking outside of the box, you know, sometimes that is soup kitchens, um, sometimes, you know, that, you know, in, the, in Oklahoma, we don't have a lot of treatment centers. So, you know, of course we do our presentations in treatment centers, but we have to really kind of find other places. I, what I like to do is remember what I was doing whenever I was using and, you know, I would always go to where, you know, if someone had free Wi-Fi, you know, whether that be, 
you know, the library or a, an emergency room or the casinos in Oklahoma. You know, I will go in there and hang flyers in their bathrooms or they may get taken down, but somebody's going to see it, right? It has a phone number on there, pull tabs on there. We have to really just get out there. I drive through McDonald's. I promise you someone in that kitchen is using right now. I hand them a flyer in the drive through window, you know, I just really just, you know, some our phone numbers are on there, they'll call us, right? Um, once we locate those places to do presentations, we have to set up an appointment, whether that be with, you know, outpatient services or treatment centers or, you know, we, we, we figure out who we're going to go do those presentations for and we, we want to make sure we're very presentable when we go, go into those presentations. Um, for instance, if we're going to, to speak with providers, we need to make sure that we are, we're dressed for that occasion. We need to make sure we're dressed nice. We, you know, carry ourselves well and we're not in there just, you know, talking like I'm talking to you guys. Like this is not how I would normally talk, obviously, but you know, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm having to speak for the occasion, right? So, <laughs> um, um, let's see, but I got my lost myself there too. Um, <laughs> um, you like you want to dress for the occasion, so we do some presentations. Are sometimes in like like you said, you can do them anywhere in grocery stores, and we do some in, in parks or soup kitchens. Of course, I'm not going to dress like this when I'm going to the park. You know, I'm going to dress normal, and you know, I'm going to I'm going to talk to those people and connect with them, and and you know normal terms, you know, like like I probably did when I went into that treatment center in Wichita Falls, Texas. I was whew, brand new. <laughs> so, you know, and I have to remember to, to meet those people where they're at and not where I'm at today. So um, that's super important that we, we connect with those potential newcomers. Um, you want to, when you're doing a presentation, you want to share some of the basics um, about Oxford House, you know, what, it, what Oxford House is. What, how you, how do you get into an Oxford house? There is a, you know, application process and an interview process. And, you know, they're, they're, some of their rules because you want them to know before they move into Oxford house what they're moving into and not just be like, oh, surprised, you know, like, oh, I have to get a job, you know, I have to work. You want me to go to 12 step meetings? So let's kind of prepare them for that kind of step before they even apply. You know, they may not even be a good candidate for an Oxford house because they're not willing to do those kind of things, right? So we want to make sure that we, like I said, explain all of those things, the job, the meetings, the curfews, um, overnight visits, you know, whatever, whatever your area does, kind of explain that to what they're moving into. And always explain the fun that we have in Oxford House. Um, we have a lot of fun, you know, like we're here in Seattle having a, a lot of fun. You know, there's so many people out there that are missing out on this fun. And we need to reel them in with the fun aspect part of it because that's, that's where it's at with us. Um, you want to go in there too and briefly share some of your experience. Um, strength and hope. You know, you don't want to go into a treatment center and, and, you know, share your war stories and how horrible it was, you know, and how much you did and drank. And we don't care about that stuff, you know. We want to get stay in the solutions, right? We want to know like what life is today when we're sober and what we're doing living in Oxford houses. Um, and that also, you know, builds a connection with them too. You want to kind of like, I think it's really important when I, I go to presentations to really sit down with them one-on-one -on -one and talk to them because this is potentially going to be, could be my, my next roommate, you know, and, or, you know, be in, my, be in my chapter, and I'm going to really know this person on a more personal level later, so I might as well just really get to know them now, you know? And so I'll sit there, and sometimes I'll be at a presentation for three hours just hanging out with the, with the guys or girls in treatment, and, and that's a lot of fun, you know, just, just really connecting with them. Um, you want to make sure you have literature. I know that states have their flyers. I know Oklahoma, we have our, our flyer. And then um, you want to make sure you leave them with that. I always take applications with me as well, you know. That way, they, if they want to, you know, set up an interview, they have a means and ways to get, get an application filled out. Of course, the vacancy site, you want to make sure they know how, how to do that. Um, I also, I, I, I think this is why I'm on this panel, honestly, is because uh, 
<laughs> so, I, you know, you want people to remember you, right? So, um, <laughs> I always make these, 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 I know some of them are on y'all's seats. So, this one says, give us a ring for all your recovery home needs, right? So, I tape it to a little ring pop, and, and they're going to remember me because, you know, they got a ring pop. That guy right over there is going to remember me all day because his tongue's going to be blue from this painted ring pop, right? So... <laughs> Um, you know, I take something, um, whether it be, I know some of the, the chairs have lifesavers on them. I'm, you know, if I'm going to a provider, um, I'll take them something a little bit bigger, like, you know, a soda or, you know, something that will make them, we leave an impression, you know. We don't, I, my daughter is a real estate agent and she always takes this stuff into, you know, business development because that's kind of what we're doing here, right? We're just kind of trying to grow these Oxford houses and expand, and we need to do that by leaving an impression. Anyways, that's all, I, that's all I've got. <laughs> Thank you, Whitney. I think it's very important. What I've started doing when I conduct presentations is, like Whitney was talking about, I always set the tone, right? It's not about Oxford House is going to give you that safe, sober, stable environment for you to thrive in, but it's up to you to make sure you have some type of recovery program, right? It's also not about just staying clean and sober and paying your portion. There are things that you're going to have to do in an Oxford house to maintain the quality and the level of that house. And so I think it's important that we set that tone in the beginning uh, when we're conducting these presentations and when we're educating the public about Oxford House so there are no surprises. So they know what they're getting into and that way we don't, you know, we leave no room for, well, I didn't know. I didn't know. I paid my portion. I go to work. What else do you want from me, right? We're setting that tone in the beginning. Thank you, Whitney. So next we have Taylor Wright. Taylor Wright moved into Oxford House Loveland on March 1st, 2016 in Loveland, Colorado moving from his home state of Texas to begin his life in recovery. He has assisted in the opening of many new Oxford houses in multiple regions of Colorado through chapter and state association service work roles, holding a full-term seat as a chapter and state association chairperson. Taylor's employment with Oxford House began on August 15, 2018, at which time he assumed the role of outreach worker for Colorado Springs. He was granted the position of Senior Outreach Coordinator for Colorado as of August 1, 2019, which is the current designation he serves under. He is also a credentialed peer support, excuse me, peer recovery support specialist trainer. Y'all welcome Taylor. Hi everyone, my name is Taylor Wright. I'm a man in long-term recovery. What that means for me is I haven't found it necessary to drink or use a drug since January 28th of 2016. So I've got a few questions to start. Are y'all having a good time? Yeah. It's been a fun convention. You caffeinated? Everybody feeling good? Good. All right. So another question. How many of you in this room think that connecting with community providers and resources is the job of a particular committee or an outreach worker? A few of you? Okay, that's definitely not the case. A lot of the times, the HSC committees or presentation committees or things like that, that is a role that's assumed by an outreach worker or that particular committee, but the truth of the matter is, within our model, we have extensions, and th that extension is yourselves. So any individual can go out and seek the opportunity to communicate the Oxford House model and what that means. Um, so considering the fact that we've got 27,000 beds nationwide, that's 27,000 opportunities for everybody to outreach into the community. Press the buttons over here. We broke it again, Tyler. <laughs> there we go. Oh. Uh, to, to outreach into the community and create those opportunities that much more over. Um, this, this portion, connecting with the community, is a bit of a segue with what Megan and Whitney had to say, uh, but there's, there are a few important uh, notes to consider when you're outreaching into the community and trying to connect in that way. And the first of them is to establish what is needed for a network of houses or area so that the organization you are attempting to contact is a useful resource. A lot of us know that 
for the most part, that means connecting with providers and getting with them to generate things like referrals. But it could also mean that you're outreaching to them uh, or trying to connect with them so that you can get resources for members in terms of um, clothes, uh, food, perishable type items, things like that. So it's a, important to consider the network of houses in that area and what they need so that it's most beneficial for, for that group of individuals and that network of houses. The second one is to communicate on how to get that done within the committee. So that's a bit of a segue in what Megan was having to say. So it's very important to create a group effort in making that happen. The HSC committee or presentation committee is important in making that happen because they provide that forum for allowing you the opportunity to come together and figure out how best to do that. So if you as individuals have that idea, that would be the perfect opportunity for you to reach out to the outreach worker or to that committee and say, I'd like to get together, I've got an idea, I'd like to ringlead it, we can get together and let's figure out how to make this happen. Um, the next thing would be to explain who you are contacting, what you hope to accomplish. Um, obviously considering the fact that you're outreaching into different organizations, those organizations are geared towards uh, trying to accomplish different things, uh, mostly within the recovery community, but that could include many different things as well, like I was saying. Um, so you're gonna wanna get with them and, um, like I said, explain what you're hoping to accomplish, but also on the same token, you're gonna want to figure out what you can accomplish for them and how that relationship can work in tandem with each other so that it's a long-standing relationship and as long as those uh, ties are binded, you can carry on that relationship, you have points of contact, you keep in contact with them, um, and those resources will be available to those houses and to the members for the duration because odds are when you all leave Oxford houses, at whatever point that you do, those resources are still going to be needed for the individuals that are kept around in those Oxford houses. The next thing is to do your homework on the material uh, you offer initially and ask what they might like to know about. Um, and that's, that's a bit redundant, but you do wanna have um, some actual literature, and that was a bit of a segue in what Whitney had to say, but you want to go in there planned. Um, if you don't, and, and you don't put some words on paper in whatever way that you do that, um, then you're gonna go in there wondering what I need to do. For the most part, I like to think that within the HSC committees, you're going there and you're speaking more on experience, strength, and hope, um, and attraction rather than promotion. So you're more just doing speaking from the heart. Uh, if you're talking to individuals in treatment centers that um, are just looking for a vacancy or something like that. So it can look many different ways, um, but the point is I have a plan. I want to know, I know what I want to, the message that I want to convey. I know the message that they want me to convey and then you go and do that. So the next thing is uh, listen to what their needs are so that you can offer assistance and create a longstanding relationship. And I touched on that just a little bit. Um, but util utilizing the HSC committee, your outreach team and just your house um, and, and establishing the fact that we want to do this regularly um, and um, communicate. They don't feel like you have the sole responsibility of making those relationships last. So if you come together as a team and you say, well, we're going to make these, t these, these presentations happen on a regular basis. Uh, these are going to be the points of contact, which are just not one individual. It should be a whole committee or an outreach worker, a committee, house members. Uh, whoever's plugged in with that organization, it's important that in connecting with the community, you plan who those individuals are going to be on a consistent basis. Uh, the next thing is going to be be respectful of their time. If you commit, show up as routinely as possible. If you're connecting with the community, they are lending you their time. Um, and that's not, that can easily, that bridge can easily be burned if you go out there and you say, well, yeah, I'd like to do this for a few months. And, and I'm committing to that, or I'm committing to that for a year, and then you're having trouble organizing that, and then the HSC committee or the presentation committee or, or outreach worker or whoever ends up not showing up, and then that bridge is burned, and then you don't have that resource available anymore. 
Um, so coordinating that connection uh, and maintaining that is extremely important. The next thing is to understand your role and operate within the bounds of what you can accomplish within the HSC committee, uh, yourselves, like if you're going in um, on a service work level and you're speaking to experience strength and hope, don't promise commitments in terms of, well, yeah, we're going to make this one thing happen or another. We're going to uh, work with you very closely in gener generating referrals. Just put the information out there and say, this is my experience in an Oxford house. Uh, there are multiple levels within our model uh, that maintain certain responsibilities. So just go in there and basically don't commit to a whole lot. Put the information, put the information out there, and then that, that relationship, as you do that more and more, will naturally um, establish itself. Uh, and then the last thing is to share your contacts and stay connected. Um, as I've stated before, um, if you share not just your contact information, but the contact information of HSC committee uh, chairs or members of the HSC committee, uh, house members that may want a direct pipeline to a provider for whatever they're trying to access or a resource management center or something <coughs> like that, as many numbers is, is allowable based on that committee or, or the house or whatever the case may be, do that. Send, that, send that information out, whether it's business cards or a contact sheet or whatever the case may be, uh, so that if somebody misses that phone call, you can be the next person to pick up the phone and say, well, here's the information that you were seeking. And the more people that you have to do that, um, then you'll be, am I getting close? Oh, you're, we're, we're great okay. on time. Okay, I didn't know if that was code. No, no, <laughs> he's just an actor. Okay. Yeah, we're right. good. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so share those contacts. That way there's as many individuals that can reach out to those providers, answer those phone calls, because you might not have an answer, but somebody else might have an answer. Um, so, so take that initiative. Um, and that's all I've got. Thank you for letting me share. Thank you, Taylor. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, kind of going off of what he was just speaking about, when I was... I had the privilege of serving as the first chair of the reentry committee that we had in the state of Texas. And as the chair of that reentry committee, every month I went to the CPC meeting in town and it was just a, a networking meeting at the parole office, but it was through attending that meeting every month that I was really able to find a lot of resources that we could utilize on our reentry committee. Um, so much so I was so plugged in into that networking committee Hold on. I thought I turned that off. Um, I was so plugged in when I became an outreach worker, I was, I was able to get right into um, doing a class at the Tarrant County Jail. So don't be afraid to put yourself out there. I worked um, I, with my work schedule. I was able to make sure that I was always there at that meeting um, every month. And I was able to connect all of these these resources to our individuals that were coming into our homes through the reentry committee. Um, so much so my personal number was out there everywhere. I fought very hard to be able to keep it as a staff member, but I was not allowed to. So next up we have Leaf Plobe. <laughs> that I've, I've been more worried about mispronouncing his last name than anything else today. Okay, so Leaf moved into Oxford House Howard in Eugene, Oregon, October 11th, 2016. He moved in as a core member to OH Balcom in October of 2018, held multiple service positions on chapter and state levels. He was hired in February of 2019 as outreach for Southern Oregon. In September of 2021, he was offered and accepted the senior outreach position for the state of Oregon. He is also a certified recovery mentor. Y'all welcome Leaf. Oh, good. 
your time. You want to tell your story? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right. So, I am nervous too, mainly for you guys. Um, <laughs> I like to be just as surprised as you at what's going to come out of my mouth. So um, anyhow, I am, uh, I share a clean date with Whitney. I'm a man in long-term recovery, and my clean date is June 11th, 2016. <laughs> Weekends, holidays, all of that since then. Um, you know, I'd like to, one of the things that, um, uh, my little piece of this basically is is uh, engaging your crowd, and I, I, uh, I was in I was in a, a treatment facility in Eugene, Oregon, well, Coburg, right outside of Eugene, in 2016, and these two guys came in, and my counselor had been talking to me about Oxford House, and it did, it sounded terrible, you know. It's, I was like, you you want me to what, you know? Um, and these two guys came in, and I believe that they were part of an HSC committee out of Salem. And uh, they looked happy, you know, and they got along. They lived in a house together. They, they were poking fun at each other. And, I mean, I was like, you know, that doesn't look terrible, you know. I mean, and for, for a guy like me, um, um, the one thing, at least the, 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 the point that I had reached was um, I was so tired of where I came from. I was just tired, you know, and, and, I, I, and I'm... Uh, smart enough to know that uh, if I decide to go back out there, it's just like it was, you know? I mean, it's, it's just like it was. And also, I wanted to say, and I kind of bounce around a little bit, so I hope you guys are going to be all right with that. I just wanted to say congratulations for being in an Oxford house. You no longer have to go to the trap house, you know what I mean? So... I remember my... Uh, my, my first sponsor, one of, the, one of the assignments that they had us do uh, when I was in treatment was uh, you had to get a sponsor. They wanted you to get a sponsor. And uh, he comes in to see me. And like I said, my, my, I got clean in, uh, you know, June 11th is my clean date. And he goes, you know things are bad when you go to treatment in the middle of summer. That <laughs> 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 yeah, wasn't good. It wasn't good. Um, uh, so one of the things that we want to keep in mind, you know, um, uh, uh, are you guys engaged? Because I'll get down on one knee. <laughs> Sorry, babe. Um, um, <laughs> uh, one of the things you want to keep in mind when you're going out, and here's the thing, is, is a lot of us, and I, it still happens to me, um, imposter syndrome is real, right? And when you come from the place that we came from, um, it's intimidating to it's intimidating to go in, even if you're going in to speak to residents in a treatment facility, even though, you know, you might be you might have three weeks clean, a month clean and, and you get asked by your by your chapter officers or your HSC committee to be part of a presentation going into a residential facility. Um, and that's intimidating, even even going in and talking to people um, in a detox, you know, and, and, and the audience, it's a tough crowd in a detox, you know, they're. <laughs> you know what I mean? But but. But, um, <laughs> but, but I mean, you know, we, we have to, you, you, keep, you, you keep the audience in mind. And I know some of these things have kind of been touched on, but, um, you know, I might not lead with, if I'm going in to present to, let's say, an all-staff meeting at a parole and probation office, I might not lead with the fact that um, at, at my bottom, the last time I went to see my drug dealer, he gave me a life choices speech. You know, you know, he, he sits down and he's like, so uh, what are you doing with yourself? <laughs> you know, you know? <laughs> well, I mean, it should be obvious I'm here, <laughs> you know. Um, but no, you know, I mean, you, we, we've got to keep in mind. And with you guys, that's okay. I can say something like that and I've got your attention. You know what I mean? Um, um, and if I'm going into a treatment facility, I can lead with something like that. I can talk about my clean date and, 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 um, and make myself... Um, available as, you know, listen, I came from where you're at, you know, there is a better way, you know, that kind of a deal. But one thing you can count on is if you're going into a professional setting, like if it's a parole and probation office, is, is that passion that you have, and you might not have it yet, but, you, but it's coming, you know what I mean? And, and for those of you who, if this is your first, how many of you guys, if this is your first convention you've been at? I, I bet if it's not already lit that you're, that you're taking home a fire with you, that, that, that there's a good chance it won't go out. You know, and that's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. Um, 
But, but keep in mind that anybody who's in this field, whether they come from the same road as us or not, they've got a passion for this. They've got a passion for helping people. They want to see you do better. And I know most of us have a bad relationship with people like parole officers, probation officers, things like that. But believe it or not, they are in this because they want to help you too. You know, I mean, they, they do want what's best for you. And some of us, once we get a little time under our belt and once we've done a little work on ourselves, we can actually see that, you know, that the, in, in Oregon, we call it DHS. I know in other areas, they call it something else. When they, the people who, like, take your kids, but you got to jump through all the hoops to get your kids back. You know what I mean? They make it hard because they want you to succeed. You know what I mean? It, it's, so one thing you can count on is when you go to present to these people is, um, is that's their goal. You know what I mean? And, 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 and a, for a lot of places, like, like Oxford House has done a lot of the work for us already. You know, the model is proven. You know what I mean? It, it's it's evidence-based. We don't have to sell them, you know, who we are. You know, really. I mean, it, we, can, we can point them towards the website. We can, uh, we can talk about our life experience and whatnot. But more times than not, at least in my experience, when I go in somewhere, especially into even a newer area, they're like, oh, thank God. You know, they're like, come on, please. You know, um, there has been times where uh, I've went into a place, there's a, there's a, uh, um, there's some things going on in Oregon right now where there's a lot of money available to treatment providers and things like that. And um, because of that, there's kind of, there's kind of uh, been like this atmosphere of competition. You know what I mean? It's, everybody's gunning for this funding. You know what I mean? And so there's been some areas that I've went into when they're like, uh, they're like, what are you doing here? You know, I mean, you're not, you're not after this money, are you? You know, and uh, I'm like, no. Nope, you know, I mean, and it's, and if you're, and if they're offering housing and things like that, that's okay, because one of the things I'll say to them is like, listen, we play well with others. When they're done with your six-month program, send them to us. You know what I mean? Because they're not done, you know. Um, stop it. Um, but, you know, and, and like I was, like I was talking about, and I do bounce around a little bit, but the, the, um, imposter syndrome, you know, I mean, there's still times today when I go into a place and if I'm sitting down with the director of parole and probation or something, in the back of my head, that little voice, you know, comes up and it's like, what are you doing here? <laughs> you, you know, do these, pe these people might find out who you are, you know, <laughs> you know, and, uh, um, you know, that's, that's okay. Yeah, that's okay because, um, like I said before, you know, if, 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 and I will share, like I go into a professional setting um, and, and, I, and I like using parole and probation as, as one of my examples because they're one of the ones typically, once I get that relationship established, they will typically open doors for you. You know what I mean? Well, have you talked to this guy? Have you talked to this guy? These people would really like to hear from you. You know, that kind of a deal. And um, Another thing you can do when you go in, if, if, and you might be in an area, and, and you might not be doing presentations or seeking presentations on that type of a level, and that's okay. But one of the things that you can do also when you get into these places, and, and a lot of the guys that I work with, I'm going to pick on Chris real quick. He's one of the outreach workers there in Oregon, and I just spent some time with him. We'll go in, and one of the things that I will do too is, is in Oregon anyways, and I'm sure it's like this other where we have a lot of, in communities, they'll have local alcohol and drug planning committees. They'll have um, um, like housing, like uh, uh, housing and homeless committees. They'll have, you know, and you can, you can even as a chapter officer or someone, if this is something that you've, if this is a position that you have in a, in a, in a housing services committee or any of that, you can get yourself plugged into some of those and it just opens more doors. It shows you more avenues that you can go down. And even if it's a place that feels like, you know, more times than not when I, when I got onto one of those type of committee meetings, uh, as far as presenting, um, I'm, I'm like, you know, what am I doing? What am I doing here? You know, but what typically will happen is if you get our name out there, someone's going to know someone who needs some help or vice versa, or they know an organization. And then all of a sudden that you're going to get an email or a phone call and be like, hey, you know, can, can, can you come over here and talk to these people? Because they, they could really use some help. And, and it just kind of spider webs, you know. Uh, um, let me look at my bullet points here, guys. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, and one of the things, too, that, that I like to keep in mind, and this piece works its way into um, to my life, 
uh, to any time that I get to get up and talk, you know, to, to, to you guys or anybody else, if I'm not giving a presentation, um, um, I might not verbalize it like I'm about to, but like, um, and I mentioned this yesterday too, uh, uh, do you, how many of you guys know what the three R's are for Oxford House? Okay, we've got, we've got recovery, uh, rep all right, all right. <laughs> But so what a lot of people, what a lot of people, what a lot of people forget, you know, and, and I hope that, um, um, and there may be some of you guys in this room that haven't done that yet, but I mean, the recovery piece, right? Because I mean, once we, once we start doing the work, once we start digging in a little bit, we by default start carrying ourselves differently, you know, and, and a lot of times the way that you present yourself is going to say way more than the words that come out of your mouth, you know, um, and so I always, I always put that first. And, and, and a, a big piece of any recovery program is, is service work, you know. And, and if you're not, you know, I, I, I work my recovery program in Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, um, and if I'm, if I'm taking in, because I used to, I was, I was doing, uh, I, I was in HNI, and I was taking meetings into to county jails and things like that. Um, but the cool piece about, about us, you know, is, is Oxford House is a part of my story. You know what I mean? And so even I was working on this on this uh, on Lane County Jail in Eugene about bringing in an Oxford House presentation. And they're like, oh, yeah, you know, I kept getting the runaround for a long time. Well, I got invited to H&I and I <laughs> to, to go in. And I mean, I know it's singleness of purpose, but the fact of the matter is, is it's part of my story. And so, I mean, I, it's not like I'm going in giving an Oxford House presentation, but it is a piece of, of why I'm here. And so more times than not, there'd be a couple guys would come up when I was done and be like, well, so how do I get into an Oxford house? Oh, well, here, there's a website, there's a phone number, here's my card. <laughs> you know, I mean, so um, it's, uh, it's, really a, it's really a beautiful thing. And if you guys, if you guys, are, uh, if you guys are in this room right now, you're, uh, you're, you're on the beginning of a, of, a beautiful, of a beautiful journey, a beautiful ride. And I'm excited for you guys. And I, and I talked about this a little bit yesterday, too. It's like I... I I went to my first world co convention in 2017. It was in Washington, D.C. And um, um, I had a little over a year clean at that time. And my chapter chair was like, we're going to go to this convention, and, I, and I'd really like you to come. And uh, uh, I was standing at the bottom, uh, standing at the foot of the Lincoln Memorial, and I had a spiritual experience. You know what I mean? And I, and I came back to this, and I was sitting where you guys are, and that, that, that thing just grew. You know, that fire was lit. And... Um, and because of that, I mean, the, the main purpose, I'm going to circle back to the recovery piece, is um, um, you get to live differently today, you know? Like I talked about, like I jokingly said in the beginning, you don't have to go back to the trap house. Um, this, is, this, is something that we, this is something that we get to be part of, and it, and it gets to be a, a safe place for you to, to focus on yourself and, and pursue that program of recovery and in doing so, the service piece folds right back into this presentation is, is you get to be a piece of someone else getting that same opportunity, you know, and um, um, that's a beautiful thing. You know, I mean, when I was sitting in that drug dealer's house getting the speech about the choices I had made in my life that led me to that point, you know what I mean? Um, um, now, now I get to be up here and I get to talk to you guys, you know what I mean? And that's a, um, uh, it's a beautiful thing. It's something I can never repay. And so the, the, the biggest piece of why, you know, conducting presentations and educating the, uh, the public about Oxford House is important is we save lives. I mean, plain and simple, you know what I mean? Uh, the alternative of, of going to, uh, and, I, and I, know, I know there's other recovery homes, and, and, and by no means do I ever present myself as a salesman. I, I, it's not about hitting numbers, um, um, but, but we are different. You know what I mean? It's, it's not, it's not a, uh, uh, you're not in a, in a house that's managed. You're not being told what to do. You know, I mean, and I'll work those things into a presentation, especially when I'm talking to uh, people at a residential facility. You know, I mean, it, it's, it's up to the individuals and the family aspect that Paul Malloy was, was on to say. You know, I like to say this. I like, Bill Wilson in 1935 was, was in, divinely inspired when that big book got written, you know what I mean? Because of the big book, now there's Narcotics Anonymous, and there's, you know, I mean, it, it folded into a lot of different things. Well, well, when, when Paul Malloy and those men in that first house in 1975 opened that house, I believe it was also divinely inspired. You know what I mean? I, I, I truly, honestly believe that. And um, the way that this thing is set up, 
uh, the reason that you guys are here um, um, is, is something that we get to pass on and we get to continue going. We get to help him try to hit that 10,000 houses, 20,000 houses. And the main goal of that is not to say that we have 10,000 houses. It's to provide those beds that Taylor was talking about to give people like you and I a safe place to lay our heads uh, that's not a trap house because the fact of the matter is um, um, if, if we didn't have the opportunity to have someplace safe to, to focus on ourselves and change our lives, um, um, the, it's a roll of the dice. They used to take people like us and they'd lock us up because they didn't know what to do with us. You know, um, and, and now we have a home. You know, we have a home and, and we have a family. And, uh, um, you know, everybody else might have given up on us at one point, but not Oxford House. You know what I mean? So. So with that, I'll wrap it up. Sure. Okay, okay, <laughs> yeah. Oh, we'll do questions when I'm when we're done. Yeah, sorry. Just a moment. Yep. Um, so with that, uh, to, to I can't remember who was talking about it. Know that when you guys walk out of here, especially if you're wearing an Oxford House T-shirt or an Oxford House hat or an Oxford House hoodie. Um, um, any opportunity is an opportunity to spread the word. I was just getting a cup of coffee upstairs uh, shortly before this, and this this woman comes up and she's looking at my name badge and she says, "Is there a is there a conference here?" And I was like, "Yeah, well, what are you guys doing?" And so we had like a five ten minute conversation about Oxford House, and she started asking me questions. So, and that's why they call it an elevator speech, you know. So I mean, any any moment. Any moment, um, um, you could be in a grocery store, you could be wherever, and, and that person that you're talking to more than likely has an aunt, a cousin, a brother, a, a daughter, you know what I mean, someone who needs help. And, and because of the little brief conversation that you had with them, they might get it. So that's all I got. Thank you, Leif. And I, I mean, I don't know about y'all, but Oxford House was an absolute game changer for me. And um, we, I was with Sabrina and Chelsea, two members on my team on Tuesday. We took the sounder down to Puyallup to visit my grandmother. And an opportunity presented itself um, to speak with Dave, who worked there at the, the transit system about you know, why we were in town. I was getting directions. And I was like, yeah, we're not from here. I'm, I'm from Texas. We're here for a convention. And so that created the conversation where I was able to, we were able to, Sabrina and I were able to give him a little education about those in recovery. He had different views, but that was okay. We could, uh, we could agree to disagree, have a healthy conversation. And, and I was able to plant some type of seed about Oxford House. Um, so there's, there's always an opportunity to talk about Oxford House. Um, I remember I was setting up a storage unit for one of the chapters back home. And I'm just setting it up, talking to the receptionist, right? Giving her our name. And she's like, well, what is this Oxford house? And so I was able to tell her about Oxford house. And she was able to tell me about a, a lot of family members she had that she thought could benefit from Oxford house. So find any opportunity you can to share about us. And uh, I'm gonna invite Taylor back up. He has a couple more things he wants to add. So, Something that I wanted to address is, um, how many of you feel like you have a lot of presentation and social anxiety? Okay, that's an obstacle for most every one of us, including us that are up here. So, so know that it's a very common trend. And my best advice in conducting presentations is just put yourself out there once. Start with a small crowd and then work your way up into larger crowds. Take someone with you that has good experience in conducting presentations that you can feed off of um, and then work your way to larger crowds. Um, it definitely does get better the more that you do it. Um, don't, don't take yourself out of the equation just because that's something that you're experiencing and you feel like I'm not qualified or I've got too much fear. Start small, work your way up and it will get better. That's all I've got, thank you. All right, let's give them one more round of applause. Thank you all so much. So we have about 20, 20 minutes left in the session. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open it up for questions. Raise your hand, Tyler will come around with the microphone um, and then our panelists will answer the questions y'all have.
Hi, my name is Melvin Gordon uh, from Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, so we're having trouble right now with not having an outreach coordinator, and uh, we have a lot of plans about opening houses and um, going out and doing like fundraisers and stuff like that, meeting with locals and shit like stuff like that. Um, what would be a good way to coordinate all that without the outreach, you know? So like we always have people who like to hold their thumbs on everything and they always have the final say. And so how is how is a way to get around all that and uh, get everybody on the same page to want to do better for our chapter? And who wants to take that? Opening houses? Okay, so you're trying to find a solution, right? So in in recovery, we try to find a solution. So, do y'all have a HSC meeting? Uh, yeah, Once a month? We have our chapter meeting and uh, we have our chapter meeting, and you know we have a HSR every week. Um, well, at least one person goes every week to a different house. So, I was asking about like the opening house, but mm -hmm. also like getting everyone on the chapter on the same page on wanting to do better for our city, um, expanding, meeting people, making connections, stuff like that. So you just, uh, so for me, I, w I would, well, not me, but um, I would just get, start calling treatment centers, start getting something to present at your chapter meeting. Hey, I've gotten a hold of these people. We can go once a month because normally you would set up a date of once a month and then you just make sure every month somebody is there to represent Oxford House. So I would, if that's something you're interested, you should take the lead on that and just start calling the treatment centers, getting your name in there, asking when you can come in and speak to them to set up to promote and do a presentation for Oxford House. Unity is also good too. Unity is a really good thing to get people together to show the fun of it. And then when you show the fun, they start mm -hmm. showing up. They start showing up. They want their willingness. So they're wanting to be involved. And the beautiful thing about Oxford House is we expand to fit the need, right? We don't take that person that's been in the house the longest and tell them it's time to go to the next step. We go and we open a new house. So maybe present your area with the fact that y'all have very low vacancies and now it's time to expand. Familiarize yourself with the Oxford House ma manual as well as your chapter manual and, and utilize that to read at your next chapter meeting to present to them that, you know, once upon a time somebody sat in a room just like this and opened the house that you have today. Why would you not want to do that for the next person that wants what we have? I was just going to say really quickly, too, I think these breakout panels are going to be on YouTube. Play it for your chapter. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Check. Okay. Hi, my name is George. I'm an alcoholic. Um, I'm a housing services chair, chapter chair. I'm also a presentation chair for HSC. Um, I've been to a lot of different treatment centers. We have like nine treatment centers in the New Orleans area. Um, opened up two new houses. We did. And a lot of people are being funneled into those new houses. I had a guy that actually got into a house that I had talked to and did an application with. He got into one of our houses before he graduated the program. And so what's happening now is these places, and a lot of times it is about money, unfortunately, but we have to make sure that we allow those people to make sure when we do those talks with them, for them to be able to graduate that program before they go jump from one thing into the next because it cuts them out of their money or whatever their program is. So. Thank you. Uh, hi, Steve from Indiana. Hi, hi, Steve. We have a big demand in, uh, in our area, and I've noticed a lot of people I talk to have no idea what an Oxford house is, mm -hmm. and I'm hearing it all the time. Do you guys believe in advertising? You know, like through the paper or through Craigslist or whatever, say no? No, so that's where we have to get plugged in with the resources in our community. Um, Whitney was talking about the, uh, the soup kitchens. Uh, if you don't have the treatment centers, put yourself out there, find out what's going on in the community. I know I have um, m one of my outreach workers from West Texas is actually gonna have a booth at the, booth at the zoo. Right, so find any opportunity where you can get out there and you can talk to the public. It doesn't necessarily have to be something recovery related. 
any, any place, any opportunity where you can push it out there to the public, because like we've all shared on today, you never know who needs that information to get it back to that, that you know, additional individual. So you just want to make sure that you're doing that public education, you're talking about it, any opportunity you can, and think outside the box on where you want to set up like an Oxford House table. But we don't do any type of newspaper, Craigslist, nothing. We don't do any advertising. It's attraction, not promotion. Did anybody else want to add I yeah. just kind of jumped in and took over the question. I apologize. <laughs> yeah. I have control issues. <laughs> Let me, I'll step back. <laughs> I was, I was just going to say that a state officer or a chapter officer or your outreach worker, they can help with that coordination piece. And if you're providing information to the public, you really do want it to be more about attraction rather than promotion. Um, so tapping into that and making sure you're getting information out there that's not something that... Um, is, is to advocating for, for Oxford House is going to be really important. But work as a team. Work as a group. Mm -hmm. And I also have something to mention. If you have outreach staff in your areas and you are picking up the ball to try to get presentation set up, and if you reach out to me and I'm your outreach staff, I am like, heck yeah. yeah. Like, I am mm -hmm. so excited about that. And I'm going to invest just as much effort as you are into helping you get that presentation set up in your area because it promotes the stability of your chapter. Uh, hi, I'm Armani from San Antonio, Texas. And sorry, not sorry about what I'm about to say. But um, so in San Antonio, we have a problem with the fact that coming to you presentations and things like that, it's like, um, again, sorry, not sorry. So our outreach is kind of like, it's the resident's job to do the outreach. I mean, to do the, pr the presentations and stuff like that, you know, and the houses that have loans and things like that. And, you know, that's why it's in the promissory you note know, and things like that. So what can we do to like bring them in again? I mean, cause Oh, and it's there, you know, it's not working. Um, so it's solely on the residents, and we're getting this misguided information about who's supposed to do it, who's in charge, and things like that. So what's the best way to get them to do not only their job, but to uh, help us do our job as the presentation chairs as well? That's, that's a good question. I, I would say that a good starting point would be to contact another outreach worker or the senior outreach coordinator in your state and have a group meeting about delegation of responsibility and what that looks like and how some of that workload can be taken off and, and changed a little bit appropriately so that there aren't individuals that are overwhelmed. It, it should be a very fluid process. And if you have that discussion, you can work through a lot of those frustrations. Thank you. Hi, uh, Anthony, I'm the presentations coordinator for chapter one in Austin, Texas. Um, so I'm actually having the kind of opposite problem, um, whereas all the presentation coordinators are doing all the presentations and we have nobody else wanting to step up. Is there any advice that you could give me to get others involved? Grab the new guy at your house and put him in the car. I don't have a car. <laughs> I would if I had a car. Call it telling. Voluntelling. Yeah. Um, the other question I had was... Hold on, I had to write it down. Oh, uh, so you brought up how you can very easily you know, burn contacts by not showing up. So I unfortunately was um, basically, I had to pick up a dropped torch from the previous coordinator. And so I'm trying to get advice on how to reestablish those burnt connections. I don't know if anybody else wants to speak, but I, I, one of the things that I, will, that I will tell people often is, is persistence. You know, I mean, persistence is gonna beat resistance. I mean, even if they, even if they um, um, react poorly to you showing up because they got a bad taste in their mouth, just keep showing up. Yeah. You know, that's, that's really the best. Yeah. yeah, donuts. Donuts make people smile, yeah. Hi. Um, 
I was supposed to say her name, I'm Ashley. Um, <laughs> uh, I am currently am in Oregon, and uh, my family is talking about moving to Utah, and they asked me to follow them. Um, and in Utah, there's one house. Uh, so I was just curious, like, how, how would you go about taking, taking a state with limited houses to setting, a, setting it on fire and growing it? Uh, and then how do you handle, like, at what point do you start your state committee? Like, where do, where do you go? <laughs> well, considering the fact that we have a very limited number of, of Oxford houses, I, I believe it's one or two actually at this point, in Utah, it is very important so that it's done productively mm -hmm. that you contact an outreach worker in a close-by state or a regional manager or something to that effect, senior outreach coordinator that can help, that can assist in those communications. Um, but what I can tell you is that Utah is being pursued to some degree currently, so there is some momentum in that department. I would like to help with that. Okay. <laughs> awesome. First of all, thank you very much for all your time and your service. Um, I truly believe that God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. You're all doing great. Thank you. So um, my question refers to replication. Um, I live in Lincoln County, Oregon, where there's like 50,000 people in the entire county. And we have one house. And I'm the HSR for the house. And I've been there for a little over three and a half years, and I've gotten the question a couple times, how come you haven't opened a new house? Because the demand is there. And here's the situation. Um, in Newport, Oregon, Lincoln City, Walport, all the houses that are large enough to actually be qualified for a Oxford house are either already owned or rented, or they're owned by a vacation rental company that is not interested in dealing with Oxford house because they make more money renting it out by the day or the week. Mm -hmm. So. I'm wondering how can I go about, like with landowners and, and, and real estate agents, how do, how do I reach out to them to let them know about our need and, and have a presentation ready to go so that we can replicate in Lincoln County and not necessarily break away from chapter 19, maybe become chapter 101, because you know, we're on 101, I, I don't know. but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Because, I mean, being 60 miles away from the rest of our houses, I mean, it, it's, it's a logistics thing. I, I want to be involved at the chapter level, but, I mean, if I get off work at 5 o'clock, I can't necessarily drive over to Albany or Corvallis and participate in house meetings and still make it back in time, get a good night's sleep, be productive at work, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So how do I get more houses started in my area and the presentation necessary to do so? You know, I, I, I don't know how to do it. You know, I'm only one guy. And... Yeah, I'd throw the new guy in the car when I go to chapter meetings. And, you know, and I, I reach out to, to Tim. And, you know, I reach out to Ed. And, and, you know, before it was Sean. And it's the same thing every time. There's nothing available in Lincoln County. And it's a matter of letting them know that the need is there and that, you know, we're not just a bunch of dopers that are going to trash your house. So, I, anyway, it's frustrating, and that's enough out of me. Well, I mean, I would, the best answer I have, I guess, for that right now, it would be like networking. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you can, you, you can, you can, you can go to these, like, there, there'll be lunches and stuff that are held by real estate people. And, and you know what I mean? So just explore different avenues and show up. And you can always refer people to the, uh, to the national website. You know, I mean, as far as people who are not educated in, in knowing how um, we, and, and call me. You know what I mean? We, I'll, I'll, I'll help you get something set up, you know. Um, as far as uh, if, if, if you get plugged into something like that and you want to do, you want to set up a presentation, I'll come talk with you. You know what I mean? So, so re, like, like kind of like what Taylor was saying, you know, maybe reach out beyond who you've been reaching out to. Um, um, I didn't know that that was, that was the case that's going on out there. But, but networking. A lot of times networking, even in avenues that you might not necessarily be recovery related, um, are, are going to get you in some doors that, open up more possibilities than the ones that you've been having. Hello, uh, Brian out of Kansas City, Kansas. Go Chiefs. <laughs> First off, uh, this panel has been a godsend. Uh, about two weeks ago, I was asked to do the panel at uh, my state convention on this exact subject. So this has been amazingly a godsend. Um, being as my outreach is through Friends of Recovery Association instead of uh, directly through uh, 
Oxford, um, and my outreach um, seems to have confidence in me and just asked me to give him an outline on what I wanted to do. Just curious as to, other than this amazing presentation, which again, thank you so much, other thank resources you. I might be able to look into for building my presentation for in a month's time. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> So I know in um, my area there's a lot of coalitions, like she, you know, or one of them is saying there's reentry coalitions. Um, I get, I try to get connected. Um, I've been, I moved to Baton Rouge about a year and a half ago, and like they were, somebody was saying like burn the relationships were burned, so they won't, not, you know, didn't want anything to do with Oxford House. So I had to rebuild that. So I got on the internet, and I was like reentry and. You know any kind of coalitions that I could start getting in there once a month. A lot of them are doing Zoom now, so that's like really good that you you know you could still be at work. And then I started building the network like that and presenting and showing up and whether I didn't say anything or not and just kind of being there to to do that. So uh, you know just get into coalition meetings. There's like homeless coalition meetings. Just all there's all kinds of stuff out there that you can get in just to get that relationship built. Them too. You will be. They they get with people that you don't even know. You know treatment centers that you didn't even know were there to network. So once you just get in on them, they all show up, and that that's when you you start networking and getting numbers and phone numbers and stuff like that. That and and look up look up YouTube videos. There are a mm -hmm. thousand or probably millions of presentations. You know just how to conduct them and and key notes on effective uh, methods on conducting presentations. So that it, that really is a great start. Thank you. Uh -huh. And one of the things I did when I was first asked to speak on a panel is I wrote everything down that I wanted to say and I practiced it, I rehearsed it. I so much so by the time I finally got up there with my three pages of bullet points, I, I had memorized it. Uh, so don't be afraid to stand in front of the mirror and, and just speak. See, what, see what's going on with your hands. Um, record yourself and then rewatch it. That's always beneficial too because a lot of times I tend to say right, right, right. And so I, and I don't know that I'm doing it until I turn around and, and I see the recording. So don't be afraid to do that in the privacy of your own home first. I mean, Joel, and I'm from Texas, so um, what we have in the issue of West Texas is that we're limited on the treatment centers out there. Um, we have soup kitchens out there, but basically what we have out there in the soup kitchens is a bunch of homeless people that don't have any money um, and they're going in, in and out of jail. So they're on the roster every day. They get out, they go eat. Um, we have two psych hospitals out there. Uh, they'll last in the houses for about two to three weeks. Uh, we go out there to do presentations for them as well. Um, we finally got a public defender's office out there, um, but we haven't been able to get in contact with them. Um, so one of those scenes is just trying to get in there to get in there and market to them and, and open up about Oxford House, but um, and then the thing is, too, about presentations, it's the same people. It's either two people from San Angelo having to go to Abilene or also, you know, vice versa. There's only one person in Abilene willing to do it and then the outreach worker. Um, and the presentations usually fall on the same date or one's on Tuesday, one's on Wednesday. So we're going back and forth both days. So what would you recommend for that? You want me to take it? So, I, Angel, I do have high hopes. I have a vision. I've been working with your outreach worker on getting us a West Texas reentry committee going that I think is going to be very beneficial for y'all in terms of helping those um, that don't have the finances to move into an Oxford house. And then we have, because y'all are in a rural area, um, sometimes you're not as financially stable as houses that, you know, are in a big metroplex to be able to allow someone to come in. So I've been brainstorming. We are working on a solution there. Um, in terms of the presentation and the back and the forth, I know that that's a lot. Maybe we can get with the treatment centers that we're currently presenting to and see if we can do some rearranging on those days 
to where it'll be easier to get it done in one day instead of multiple days. Um, and then just really utilizing that attraction, right? Like letting individuals know like what you get out of going and being a part of these presentations and what it's done for you and your recovery, what it's done for your individual house and, and in hopes that we can pull them in in that manner. And we only have, oh, looks like we have one more question and we will wrap it up. Hi, I'm Stephanie Blandy. I'm um, Gulf Coast, Biloxi, Mississippi, mm -hmm. chapter one chair. Um, I have a question, a dilemma actually. So I learned about Oxford House through my treatment center I went through for 30 days. I stayed additional 30 transitional by choice. Uh, peer support there told me about Oxford and it's kind of hard to get in stuff, she said. But we'll see, we called, there's a bed available. Long story short, I got in. Now I work with her on a day-to-day -day basis, getting people in. We do presentations, they were already doing them at that time. We do presentations every last Thursday of the month, and she'll even pick me up, pick the phone up, and say, hey, I need two men's kids. What you got? And call me back. The problem is we're such a long, such a short, small area. I've got a um, situation coming up to where one of the girls, one of the houses that was expelled is now in that treatment center, okay, currently. Well, we have a presentation coming up for Oxford House. How do you handle that? How do you handle the client that has? I mean, how do we, do we just go, I mean, go in, make the presentation with her there? I'm kind of scared she's going to make a ruckus while we're there. And I mean, it happens. I mean, I, I've, I've never had that happen. That's why I'm asking how you guys handle it. I have. If you're too fearful, that'll take away from other individuals that feel fearful but aren't prepared. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, it had an awful big effect. Yeah. And you get to pick. Uh, Most people who get kicked out always have something bad to say about yeah, the house. That's it's not right. That's the problem. They usually get back. And uh, a lot of times. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I've done a presentation in a prison where, you know, we all talked so highly about Oxford House and how amazing it was. And when we were done, she didn't have a question. She had a comment about what her horrible experience was in an Oxford House. And, and I shut it down. I apologize that that was your experience. I promise you that not every Oxford House is that way. Let's try it again. And then I'll even go into a little bit of detail about how my first Oxford House was an absolute nightmare. And I, and I But look at me today, right? Um, and so we just try to shut it down as best we can and bring the positive aspect back into it. I've also seen the opposite happen on multiple occasions where someone was expelled from a house. I go to a treatment center later that month and they walk up to me and apologize nice. and they take ownership of their behavior and they're like, just let me know whenever I can re-interview and I'm like, I'll, I'll give numbers out to you now. Awesome. Well, thank y'all. If you have any additional questions, you can find us um, throughout the day. And I appreciate y'all coming. And thank you, Tyler. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all killed it. <laughs>